and welcome to another edition of Trail Talk TV. Today we got Wayne Broadwell in the office. Uh, Wayne is the head of iProspect, uh, head of programmatic at iProspect. And uh, Wayne, you've moved there recently, so can you speak yeah. a little bit about your role before we jump into the subject today? Yeah, so the programmatic team at iProspect has been around for six months and we provide consultancy and management programmatic services for our clients. So that can go from uh, tech selection all the way through to operating technology. Yeah. Thank you very much. And today we're going to talk about walled gardens. There's been a trend in the industry for a lot of very sizable media companies and companies that have a lot of first party data to kind of wall inventory and data. And today we're going to talk about those, that particular trend and the kind of threat they pose to agencies, particularly around cross channel programmatic buying. And Wayne, we're going to talk about today. So let's talk about the sort of reality of things at the minute we're seeing. Facebook obviously has, is about to launch its DSP, which will be sort of packed with social data. We have an Amazon bidder, which only allows you to use Amazon data. We have you know, a number of sort of um, Tesco powered sociomantic bidder, which potentially is going to be, but there's a lot of trend around to have these data driven bidders. So mm. I wanted to see what sort of the issue is for agencies because it seems to be a lot of siloization going on. Yeah. And uh, what can we do to kind of address the problem for agencies and marketers? Okay, cool. So I guess the first thing is for our clients is to uh, work out their data strategy for to use in programmatic. So mm. before you get to actually bidding, how do you define your data structure, your yeah. architecture, etc., to then use? So that's really simple to draw out. Yeah. So over here you've got your uh, awful circle. You have your online, uh, which would be your website, for example. Here you have again online it could be your paid media or your content. And then the tricky one would be a CRM, which is it could be offline. Yeah. Right, so that all for, kind of falls under the bucket of first party. And here you might have second party, which is a direct data deal with potentially a partner. So if yeah. for example, if you're an automotive brand, you might go direct to auto trade on a, a, yeah, a data deal. And here you have your, your third party, which is you know, the likes of these experience, like to me, et cetera. So there's kind of a broader marketplace. So the key here for us as an agency is to recognize these data opportunities, ingest them into a data management platform. Put it here, DMP, and then in here, segment. So we have dedicated data managers for our clients who are in there every day, looking at this data, creating audiences, but then the challenge for us is, where does it go? So there are yeah. kind of three areas it goes at the moment. One is uh, your creative. So how do you define your creative message based on your segmentation? Yeah. The second is your website. So how do you ensure that what you're serving in your landing pages is relevant to the user? Okay. So for example, if you're um, British Airways and you know your audience is male rather than female, you may serve them a trip to Vegas rather than a, you know, a trip to a spa holiday or something. And obviously the website has to sort of address that yes. as well. You have to have, so this is conversion optimization, so yeah. we have teams in place who help this, but yeah. a big integration play is happening here. And then finally, which we'll talk more about today, is your activation channels. Yeah. And activation is quite a broad word deliberately because it's any channel in which you can connect data. So search, obviously programmatics typically come out of display. Yeah mobile, rich media, paid social, etc. And then beneath all this, you have uh, your analytics. And that typically tells you what's working. It's really important to create a feedback loop here between how's this all performing, here, 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 and how's that redefine my audience segmentation. Yeah. So this is a typical centralized approach, and you could do this uh, quite simply, if you're just running a display channel, yeah, in kind of either RTB or um, guaranteed, yeah. But the challenge that we're seeing more and more from our perspective is where you are having wall gardens, where this DMP is not necessarily plugging in or out of certain areas. So this, this, just for uh, uh, sort of an overview, this is actually the centralized hub. This is what yeah. a good programmatic uh, strategy and build would look like. Yeah. First party, second thir party, third party data, uh, sort of analyzed, managed, activated via the DMP. You've got creative, 
then your website is optimized to it, and then you've got your activation, which is a various channels, and then their analytics layer, which basically keeps the process going. Yeah. Which is impressive. Yeah, it's exactly, and then obviously this is different for every client. Yeah, like, obviously. For example, DMP selection, yeah. for some clients it is not worth going enterprise because yeah. they don't need to use it as much. Whereas right. others, you want to go really high end. So all of these kind of, with e each of these, you get different technologies that you can kind So you of can switch out, as per client, you can switch out which vendors you use here yeah. effectively. So all of this, and that's, yeah. what, that's the role of maintenance really is to to understand the landscape of everything and yeah. make them recommendations for clients. So this here's the problem, potentially. Yeah. So you have all these new uh, sort of siloed uh, inventory and data uh, hubs yeah. appearing across different channels, um, you know, the social, um, the search, whatever. But display obviously is, a, is, a, is, is just one part of it. You are you're looking across, across channels. So what's the issue here? Why, why, is, uh, why are these wall guards a problem then? So if we just, just for the sound. Yeah, sure. So it's a, it all comes down to, so that programmatic strategy works really well. A bit of a mess here. That's all right. It um, works really well. It's a bit like the programmatic space in the middle, <laughs> know, so. Actually, yeah, it works really well. Uh, it works really well when you can reduce overlap. Right. So if you think about, you've got your, this is the total UK audience. Yeah. It's got UK, right? And you've got all these users inside it. Yeah. Over here is the Facebook reach. Yeah. And then that overlaps over here with, say, Twitter. Yeah. That overlaps with, say, Google. Yeah. That overlaps with, let's say, Mail Online. That overlaps with, say, Telegraph. Like, this, this is constantly overlapping. Yeah. And the reason why you have a DMP is to recognise and try to reduce overlap. Because that way you can serve, you can manage your frequency. A more efficient buying, effectively, as Exactly. Well. You, you, get, you get a better understanding of price. So how much is each user worth to my brand, to target. Mm -hmm. You get a better idea of the creators to serve. So you know... They've seen, I don't know, a DR message here, a brand message here, some content here. You get a better idea of that picture, mm. and then frequency. Yeah. So, um, one of the kind of promises of DSPs was the global frequency capping. Yeah. It's that's still the same. It's still a big issue for us. How do you manage your frequency through to a end goal for clients? Yeah. Um, and with all these wall gardens, you, at the moment you can't. It's really difficult to get data in and out of certain on certain places. And these, like, these wall gardens are happening, right? Like we know they're existing and we know there's probably technology being built now, which is going to be a layer above them, which helps the buying. It's still not ideal. It still doesn't necessarily connect back to a centralized view at the data management level. Yeah. So what do you, so what can you do to kind of like push against this? I mean, there's obviously wall gardens for a reason because um, let's be honest, media and tech, tech media companies are trying to protect they're dwindling ad network businesses, which is kind of why they've jumped this. Is you can only use Yahoo inventory, you can only use Yahoo, um, you know, uh, access to Yahoo inventory and access to Yahoo uh, data via our bidder. I'm just mm. using Yahoo as an example, but Amazon are similar as well. So, what can you do as an agency to push back? Is the case for said, no, we need to know, um, we need to have certain data that will allow us to execute more efficient campaigns. I think the point you touched on was around these companies kind of operating in their own silos. So yeah. they're sat in their meeting rooms thinking about strategies for the next couple of years and it's, you know, our strategy. But as an advertiser, we're not necessarily fussed about what the their strategies are. We're fussed about how do we target consumers. So I think that we need to do, particularly in programmatic, because it's still fairly new, is work really closely with them partners. And because at our prospect we're tech selective, we have great relationships in place with these guys, so we can have serious conversations about real, like you know, the best way of working around that kind of best framework approach. Mm. Mm. But it really is; it's still it's still new, still developing. Um, but we know where we want to get to from a strategy point of view. Yeah, it's just working really closely with all these different partners. Yeah, not just the big ones that everyone knows about, but yeah. also small ones around P and Ps and stuff. Like, yeah, As, exactly. The sm also small ones around content distribution. Yeah, and native. Like there's lots of yeah. different ones. Yeah. Ultimately, it needs to come together as opposed to working in silos. But you're kind of you're interested about the entire like when we talk about programming, we're not just talking about display anymore. We're talking about digital out of home. We're talking about TV. We're talking about you know pr uh, not print specifically, but uh, you know display and search as well, which is very important because I know yeah. you do a lot of search over and on prospects. So, um, is the the layer that we have the interpretation there, i.e. the DMP, is that going to be sufficient enough? to kind of 
if you can open up all these different silos and make them talk to each other and in terms of fucking making your um, deals or your buys more efficient and do all your frequency that you require does the DMP as it stands will it be a sufficient piece of tech to do that or will it have to evolve it's, it's, it's a bit of both so the DMP will be able to understand what users have seen haven't seen and you can segment them that way then the actual buying due to just processing speed will have to happen at this other layer which is typically a DSP so when it gets a bid request it can you know, react pretty quickly to frequency for right. example so it's still the core structure of DMP DSP is still there still pure play and, it's, and there's no but you can you can see you can see the problems here like a lot of people use DBM or, or use a or will use or they might use the Facebook DSP and you can just see the problems here right Google's not going to give data to Facebook and Facebook's not going to give you uh, to give data to Google so do we need like almost like an independent piece there uh, will that come from potentially one of the enterprise players who don't really have any media skin in the game so it doesn't really matter to them yeah. Is, you think and is that I mean that could lead to all, all sorts of acquisition sort of talk here, like. But is that the real reality of the situation? It has to be sort of almost an independent piece of it. Yeah, I think for uh, an enterprise level strategy and execution, yeah. you need an independent data management platform. That's yeah. personal opinion. And an independent DSP. Yeah. Okay. Where, whereas um, that's personal opinion, but whereas of course. if you've got a massive, if ninety percent of your spend is going through Google search, and yeah. you've got Google Analytics. I mean, the Google the DB doing it's a natural fit. Yeah, you have to work out based on client needs. Yeah, but to do like large scale kind of enterprise stuff, you do need, I think, open platforms. But as we get more, we get further along in the in the in the sort of um, in in the programmatic uh, evolution, it's going to be search and it's going to be out of home and it's, it's going to be different channels. So yeah. it does seem to me there has to be that in level of independence. Google cannot be. Well, it can be up to an extent as you mean it'll, it'll differ from client to client. But you mm. have a client system where we got we got TV, we got radio, we've got we've got all sorts of channels. We want we want to stitch together and say, well, we need an independent piece of tech. Yeah, and they, you think that might come from the enterprise there, a proper a proper sort of enterprise approach. Yeah, I, I think so. The, yeah, like, which is allows integrations. You can move it. You can kind of move them to integrate quickly. Whereas yeah. sometimes you're a bit behind some of the wall garden to integrate tech. Yeah. So I, I personally, pure play, yeah. be pure play DMP, yeah. for enterprise would be the way we go. Yeah. As I said, it's like, if you're massively investing in social or research, then of course. You're, you're natural things. All right. Well, thanks very much. That was really, really interesting, particularly around sort of the role I prospect are playing and obviously sort of the uh, approach to wall gardens and uh, cross-channel programmatic. So thanks very much. Cheers, thanks. And we'll see you again next time on Trend Talk TV. Thank you.